that's all the varnish removed. So you're looking to get a finish like that. That's uh, sanded down with 320 grit sandpaper. And um, then I started cleaning it with a little bit of thinners on a rag to get rid of all the dust out of the grain. And again, when I finish this, I take it indoors, just run the hairdryer over it to make sure it's nice and dry before giving it the first coat of varnish. This is eight coats of spray varnish and it's still a little bit mottly, you know. So I'm going to go for 800 grit down to 1200 and I'm going to go two more coats and that will be it. Right, so this is my glove box lid after 10 coats of varnish. I've left it for weeks now um, to harden off before I start trimming the chrome and stuff back on it. Um, yeah, and it's really shiny and nice. I think it will go with the rest of the wood I've been doing. And the bit of damage on the top. Yeah, you can see it there. But I think once the chrome handle's back on, I don't think you'll really see that. And the important thing is, is that it's protected, so it's not going to catch on anything and become worse. So the next job is to remember how all this goes back together. Which will be fun. I've got the vinyl now. So I've actually, the, the blue vinyl that was on it, I've sprayed with vinyl spray. I've sprayed it red to match the rest of the trim I've been doing. I'm looking forward to getting it all red inside. I'll set up my camera and you can see me struggle to put this back together. So the piece of vinyl sort of sticks or goes over a cardboard backing. I mean, obviously I'm cheating here because my vinyl was already in the car so it's already pre-cut same as the card so I got some super glue and I didn't bother gluing the face of it I'm just gonna glue the sides on so start by gluing the sides on make sure it's nice and central and glue the other side these little corner pieces that go over the hinge they can be glued onto the card as well but you need to leave the top and bottom flap of material free because they get tacked on so I'm trying to remember where all these chrome bits go uh, start off with the handle part first that's the first bit that goes on. I personally was using a little tub of Vaseline here to dunk the screw in before putting it in. I like to grease everything I put in and I didn't have my grease so I used Vaseline, that'll do. Then we've got the two side pieces. They are sort of sided I found. I put this one on here and then I cut the video because I actually had to swap it to the other side because it was just ever so slightly longer I think so that's those on nice and flush with the handle and the good thing is you can't really see the damage under that handle result so I put the side pieces on the side pieces have got a flat edge 
on one side and the sort of, I don't know, shaped edge that goes at the bottom. So the flat edge is the bit that goes at the top. So when fitting the side piece, you need to make sure it's protruding slightly above the wood, if you can see here. It's not flush, and that's the flat edge at the top, not the little shaped edge. See, that's the flat bit. That's the bit that goes at the top. Oh yeah, and the screw holes are sunk in. So the screw sits in there and it's flush, it doesn't stick out. So if you put the chrome bit in the wrong way, the screw protrudes and it shouldn't be, should be flush. So make sure you get it round the right way. They are sided. There we are, that's all the chrome on. And it looks great. Right, it's hammer time. So we need to get this piece angled like this. Have you? Because you need to put the tacks in at this angle. It's a bit hard to show, but that sort of folds over. So you don't see the tack. It's underneath. Now again, I'm cheating here because I'm reusing the old tacks and I'm putting them back in the old holes. <laughs> fiddly little things oh yeah and I haven't shown it in the video but um, remember to fit the catch back onto the glove box before you put this vinyl on and that's the catch not the lock after I put the tacks in I realized it was a bit rippled and not flat on the edge and then I remembered when I took it apart it had these little pieces of plastic in there don't forget those. Now it's time to tack down the bottom of the glove box. So these aren't visible when it's fitted in the car at all. So many tacks. I started to push the lock through and realised that it wasn't going in very smoothly. So there must be a build up of varnish in the hole. So I'm just sanding it out just to make sure we're not going to damage the varnish. I don't know why I felt the need to shove my finger in there. So there we are, I finally got the dashboard back together. There's the glove box. Now covered in red, ready for the red interior. I'm a bit annoyed actually, I'm, I'll mention this because when you guys come, if you're going to varnish your glove box, you might want to varnish the inside. I didn't do my inside because I thought that wouldn't be on view. 
but now I sort of regret not doing it. But it's all right. How many times are you going to look inside the glove box? Now put this chrome trim back on with help from Lyndon. It's an absolute nightmare, that trim. So many little nuts and bolts. Really awkward to get to underneath. I think it looks really tidy. I know now I've done all this, I must get the new clear inserts for the dials because they do look really rubbish <laughs> compared to the wood now. So the next stage is, well, the next thing I want to do is get the interior red. So I've ordered new red carpet. I've got a red rear seat and I've been sorting out the red vinyl for the doors and the trim. And once I've got that sorted, they'll probably then I'll do the the other wood. But I want to concentrate on the red bits first. Get rid of this blue.